Hey, little monsters! Hey, group. What's going on? Welcome to the Little Monsters Movie Podcast. I'm Dino. I'm Ted. And uh, we're going a little bit serious this week, man. Way back. Yeah, way back. Getting the uh, way back machine. Yeah, <laughs> the freaks. Todd Browning's the freaks. Uh, 1932. Did you do your homework? Because circus I side did show. mine. He's got all kinds of info, man. Yeah, um, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. His dad um, did clippings and all that. He's got the yeah, you know, the works, man. You know what it is? Is when I was a kid, um, I, I watched this movie at a young age. I don't remember where I came across it. I, I, you know, we didn't have Turner Classic Movies right, right then. Which Turner Classic Movies? If you've never seen this movie, Turner Classic Movies shows it like three times a year. Yeah, um, but it's on DVD. You know, you should definitely go buy. There's an awesome documentary on it. Uh, commentary. That it's it's just it's an awesome movie. We're lucky to even have it after we get done yeah. talking about. Well, All right. I mean, about yeah. It. I mean, you know. I mean, right off the bat. I mean, you could tell. I mean, just the the time period. Uh, I could see back then. Even now, I guess you would never get this made. But no, um, not unless it was a documentary. No, I don't think you would get this movie made because I, I think it's the movie kind of portrays itself. There's a storyline, of course. Yeah. But but it's more. It's it's pretty much documenting the the sideshow life mm-hmm. and the circus life back then right and, and a lot of it is is and, and the horror slice movie. of life kind of stuff yeah yeah and the horror movie is great because man there's mm-hmm. some awesome scenes in here right especially the, when you get towards the end there yes you know with all the which we'll get into right but the movie itself i mean i didn't look at the freaks as freaks no i looked at them as the movie Oh, well, I think, you know, and the characters themselves, which they go through really good mm-hmm. at the beginning of the, the first half of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's a shame um, the movie's only 64 minutes long. Um, I th- but, you so, know what? I think it's a, it was a perfect amount. I mean, there, there was so much more. And I'll talk about some of the stuff right. that, that was removed. He'll, he'll know a lot but of the, the info. Yeah, but, but this is one, like when we did our top 10 horror movies a couple weeks ago, this was on my list. Yeah. Um, it's not a. A movie that modern horror fans are going to watch and say, oh, it's scary. I don't even know what movie you could actually say is scary. Right. But I've never actually been scared by a movie. <laughs> I've been, like, disgusted. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Or, you know, like, a little repulsed or something. Or, or, you know, like, eh. But never scared. Right. Um, but this movie is in, you know, maybe back in the 30s, you know, movies were new. Talking movies were even doubly new. Yeah. And something like this, there was... There's lots of different genres of horror. This right. is in a subgenre of one. Right. There, there is only one movie. Yeah, like exactly. This. Yeah. This sets itself aside from all the rest. Exactly. I mean, and when I was a kid, I, I saw this movie. I don't know if it was on a VHS tape or if it was on TV. Mm-hmm. But I do remember watching it, and then I remember watching, you know, The Elephant Man when it was on cable. Mm-hmm. And my dad has always had an interest in in oddities medical oddities yeah and we've always had a bunch of books laying around like i remember we had this book it's an old old book i think on amazon you can still find a used copy but it's called sideshow a photo album of human oddities and it, it basically is it it's just a photo yeah. album. i don't know if pictures probably won't show up so good yeah. on there but you know you can see the cover and you know this is just what i had laying around when i was a kid to look at <laughs> um Conjoined twins, people born without chins, I remember, uh, third I remember. legs, third arms, babies growing out of their gut, guy with a second head on it, you know. And lobster hand, yeah, or lo- what's the lobster man? Yeah, with the claws, kinda. right. Um, actually, in in this book over here, Dino was looking at it. Another book my dad had was uh, it's from 1896, and it's called Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine, written by a couple of PhDs. Oh, Not yeah. really any pictures, but it's, I mean, you see how thick this is. Oh, yeah. And it's, the text is really small, and it's just all about different deformities, what causes them, what they knew about them back mm. then. But on the first page, my dad had, uh... He actually met some. He, yeah, yeah. Back, like, probably in the late 60s, 70s, when the sideshows were kind of fading out, he did actually meet a few, and he's got, like, their little, sorry, the glare there. The little cards from some of them. Uh, a father and... Yeah, too much of a glare. Maybe. There you go. But the father and daughter had like the lobster hand and feet and some little people. So, kind of interesting. And then... Um, cool stuff. He always collected uh, newspaper clippings of, of different things. You know, babies born with two faces. Guy that could pop his eyes out. So, I mean, this is the kind of st- reading material I had in the John <laughs> when I was a Curiosity. kid. Curiosity. Uh, an article, he must have ripped it out of a magazine at a doctor's office or something called The Real Elephant Man. 
um, all about John Merrick, some photographs, actual photographs, wow. um, studies of his bones, so I have had that. Yeah. And the only other book he had was one called, I don't even know if you can get this, it's just called Very Special People. The cover is just hardcover, green with like a Siamese twin in the corner. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Nothing on the cover. Yeah, No, kinda, t- no yeah. text. A weird book. Huh. And it's just little, kind of like short chapters on, on people that have had deformities. Some of them are in the film that we're going to be talking about. Uh, definitely John Merrick, Elephant Man. Is, I'm sure the here. I'm sure the movie itself got your father probably into it. Yeah, I, I would I mean, guess it's huh? something. He's 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 not a. Uh, I mean, he's in the medical profession now. But when yeah. I was growing up, he he worked in. This is a steel town here in Northeast Ohio. He worked in steel, and uh, but he was always interested. He always said that it, like if he'd had a chance to go to college when he was younger, he probably yeah. would have gone and you know been a doctor or medical professional of some sort. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that with you, just that, you know, I, I've been kind of exposed to this at a young age, so. Yeah. But getting to the actual movie, um, 1932, what we had had was Dracula yeah. and uh, Frankenstein, mm-hmm. and horror movies were becoming very, very popular, yeah. and uh, especially with Universal, and now and Paramount had um, Island of Lost Souls that we right. covered early in our podcast history, and uh, MGM wanted to jump on the bandwagon. So they kind of snuck Todd Browning away from Universal, and Todd, you know, you know anything about Todd Browning, or uh, you can give me a little bit of information. A little there. bit of information, uh, yeah. guys. I uh, even typed up two pages of stuff. I know most of it, but yeah. Todd Browning, um, he was a, a famous director of, of silent films, um, and he had a lot of clout. Made a lot of money in, in silent films. Um, you know, he was able to retire pretty much on his silent film money. Wow. And uh, he worked with Lon Chaney you know, okay. when he finally hooked up with Lon Chaney. But his story is that he came from a pretty well-to-do family, mm-hmm. but he always had just kind of like an obsession with sideshow life, circuses, and right. at yeah. the age of 16, he just ran away. Ran away from home from a well-to-do family, joined a circus, and, and learned... Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's some of why some of the See, stuff... See, I know, I know the movie, is true. but he's... Um... <laughs> He's got the facts, uh, man. I've, I mean, I've watched this movie so many times. Yeah, it, it's a quick watch. It is. And, yeah. uh, watched it with my five-year-old daughter. This morning. That's all right. It's, no, it's, I think it's, it's a great movie, man. I think I these mean, days it teaches more of a lesson than it did back then. And really, um, yeah. He, um, you know, he learned all the tricks of the trade, you know, firsthand. Wow. You know how to be a you know, like carnival barker or talker. You know, kind of get the people in to see the yeah. sideshows, magician acts. He was very interested in magic. Um, you know, different um, um, uh, performing acts, clown, stuff like that. So he kind of learned the ins and outs and lived that life for a while. Yeah. Uh, his paths crossed with, um, if you know who D.W. Griffith is. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, old yeah. famous film director, you know, Birth of a Nation. Just mm-hmm. look that one up if you don't know who he oh, is. Yeah. And kind of learned the ropes of filmmaking from meeting him and talking with him. And uh, got into filmmaking from there. And finally, you know, that he got paired up with Lon Chaney and they did... Todd Browning did tons of films, but he did 10 with Lon Chaney. And some of them are very, you know, if you look at old, you know, famous monster magazine and stuff like that, you're going to see images of Lon Chaney from, you know, like the sharp pointy teeth and stuff like that. And those are from Todd Browning movies. And uh, he got the crack to do Dracula. And um, he, he never made a successful transition from silent to talking. You know, it's funny to think that when they were starting to make talkies, that they didn't even know if it was going to catch on. Like, you know, Chaplin didn't want to do talkies for the longest time. Isn't that strange? Yeah, yeah like you, it's you a would... fad. No one wants that. And they don't want to hear our voices. Well, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I mean, even in the height of talkies, you know, Chaplin mm-hmm. still did silent movies, and but he, mm-hmm. you know, he was a genius. He's allowed. Exactly. But. Um, we should go back to making silent movies. Actually, no. I think Woody yeah. Allen did one, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he? I'm trying to think. And nevertheless, um, yeah. I, I remember... Or Mel, Brent, Mel, Blank, or Mel Brooks did. Yeah. Mel Brooks' is silent yeah, movie. Yeah, I never go. saw it, but I know. I know. And, and it was actually kind of annoying. I would have rather have seen, <laughs> seen him talk in the words than... Or, I know. I know he's trying to put a right. spin on it, but... You or know. even like, uh, you know, like Jerry Lewis, the bellboy. It's a completely... Oh. You know... Yeah. He is silent in that All whole movie. All topic, but yeah. You know, and Doesn't that's, say a word. Right. Or, or Mr. Bean, if you like, you know, he barely talks. Yeah, just music. That's like the next closest thing I can think of. Yeah. And that's not easy to do. You no. know, go try it. And um, so um, Todd Browning had made a movie with Lon Chaney and a small person named um, Harry Earl. Uh, his, his actual name was Kurt Schneider. He's from Germany, and we'll talk about it. He's the main character in this film that we're going to be talking about here, Freaks. Hans. Hans, exactly. Yeah. And um, it was actually Harry Earl, small fellow, 
um, who you also may recognize in the Wizard of Oz in the Lollipop Guild part. Right. He's the one with the devil horns on the yeah. side. Oh, oh, Lollipop. Yeah, you'll Guild. recognize him. So if you don't know who Harry Earl is, just watch Wizard of Oz. You've seen that part a thousand times. <laughs> yes. You'll know who he is. Yeah. And um, he brought him this short story called Spurs, which you can go online and read for free. I did it last night. I'd never read the story. And really the only similarity between the movie and the short story is that it's a... It, basically, the movie is about a small person. This all takes place in a circus who falls in love with a uh, normal-sized adult woman, uh, like bareback rider. Right. Um, and that's Cle- pretty... Cle- Cleopatra. Cleopatra is her name in the film. Yeah. That's pretty much where, you know, everything that's in the middle of this movie isn't in the story. But that's, right. you know... And, you know, they're trying to, like, steal his money. And, you know, she's having... We'll, we'll get into it. We'll yeah. talk about the movie. But um, Todd Browning really you know, liked that idea and liked the idea. He's made circus movies before with Lon Chaney. He really liked this idea of doing another circus movie. And he, he had been offered like a really big budget expensive, you know, kind of like period yeah. drama. And he said, no, I want to do this. So, so, you yeah. know, and horror movies were so popular. They, you know, they, wow. the studio yeah. wanted to get in on that. It was making a lot of money. So well, he, um, artistically, he knew what he wanted to do on his right. head, man, and, and, and it came you know, out perfect. Somehow perfect. they let him do what he wanted to do. He, yeah. he he made the movie he wanted to make, but then they slashed the heck out of it afterwards. Wow. Um, but this this film is going to feature real sideshow people, people with deformities, yeah, um, pinheads. Yes. Um, Bird uh, women, yeah. uh, human torsos, people that... Human torso, guy who has no legs, arms. Right. The, the, the Half boy, they call them. Yeah. Um, uh, small people, um, the human caterpillar, man with no legs, no arms, we were saying. Half man, half I mean, woman. Yeah, bearded man. women. The, the skinniest man that there ever was, weighed 58 pounds. Wow. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, these these are real... Free. But the, the thing in the movie is, I mean, they... they you know, like I said, you, you don't mm-hmm. see him as freaks. You see him as part of the movie, part of the the story. Um, it's the story's told beautifully. I mean, it's it's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, and, and it's it's it features the two little people, the couple Hans right. and Frida. Frida. Frida and um, yes. Frozos. Frozos or uh, Frozos the clown is like the yeah. Frollo Brothers Circus something yeah, okay. like that yeah um, and Venus and they're kind of the the pretty girl Venus right. and, and the straight guy kind of there's like a little bit of plot to the movie and then there's there all these is. little slices of life in between exactly that's what I was going to get little tidbits that don't really have anything to do with the overall plot. But yeah, the, the, like the first half like of the each movie, one gets their own little showcase. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, they kind of like showcase each. Mm-hmm. Um, person in their own way, like you know, the lady with no arms. She, they'll go pan over to her. They'll say some dialogue. Yeah. But she's base. They're basically showing her, you know, eating with her foot. Right. And doing. My what daughter she's got. thought that was amazing, by the way. And I even went online on YouTube oh, and showed her like yeah. people that could play guitar with their feet. Yeah. And she was actually, you know, she had no idea that you could do that. When you when you have when you're born that way, you learn right. to deal with it and figure it out. But yeah. So. It's, um, I guess just to finish my little history lesson on the movie before we get into it, yeah. um, the movie only took a couple months to make, and it, it didn't cost that much to make, because there's no big stars in the movie at right, all. Right, right. Um, and once it was done, it's like the producers looked at it and just hated it. Um, well, they were, yeah. They we weren't were, sure what they had. Yeah, they uh, like, they wow, test screened it. Doing? And it did horrible. I'm, there's an anecdote. You, you, you can read yeah, the, it. People were disgusted. Yeah. Like, oh my God. How did you read about the one movie? lady who, who claimed that it caused her to have a miscarriage because it upset her so bad? No. Now, that's on all kinds of stuff. And I got my information from, you know, apart from books, um, the DVD had a really good, like, hour-long documentary. Yeah. There's always Wikipedia. And even, like, Turner Classic Movies, if you search Freaks, there were some articles. Oh, yeah. And there's even... Um, you can even read some of the reviews of the movie from when it first came out, good ones and bad ones, and just how critical you know this oh, was. Because yeah. yeah. um, so it was so out there and so different, man. ahead of its time, different. Yeah. Um, it was cut. They they changed it was they changed the ending like three different times, and it still wasn't working. Wow. And um, they they en- ended up cutting about thirty minutes of scenes out. Some of them we know kind of what they were about. Yeah. Some of them we don't, but they are all completely lost and gone. Wow. And, you know, what we have is all we're ever going to have unless someone finds something someday. Um, so 64 minutes, that's what they trimmed it down to from an hour and a half. Yeah. 
and this huh. this is what we were left with. Yeah, wow, it's it's amazing that that much is taken out of there that we don't. Right, oh and God. even then, it Found didn't footage. do well. Well, some they said some markets it did well, yeah, but overall, it it, it came and it went and it fell into obscurity. It yeah. was banned in, in many countries, like like the UK. I know we've got listeners in the UK. I guess you could call it a video nasty. Yeah. Um, it was banned in the <laughs> UK for, nasty. for 30 years. Um, yeah. And how it finally kind of got caught back on was um, in the 60s. Midnight movies, uh, the counterculture right. kind of thing. And um, it kind of caught back on that way. And it fell into you know greater favor. And, and now... Um, even though, oh, and the movie, by the way, pretty much ruined Todd Browning, the director's career. Uh, he really could not get much in the way of work or get the projects that he wanted to do after that. And oh. eventually he just retired on his silent movie money. He made a, a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, he, and from fine. what I understand, he was kind of egotistical and everything. But, you know, yeah. this movie has a lot of those tidbits that he knows from circus life, right. sideshow life. In oh, it. yeah. You can see that. I and, mean, just uh, by, yeah. and now the, the movie is, you know, like I said, it plays on Turner Classic three times a, a year at least. Yeah. It's on DVD, whereas, you know, you couldn't get it before. And um, it's on the National Film Registry as a culturally historic and important movie. Yeah. But, you know, you go back to 1932 when horror movies were new, this was very shocking to see these, you know, th- th- there's more freaks, more quality Mm-hmm. Sideshow performers in this movie than any actual sideshow probably ever had. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, they may have had like one really good one, and the rest were all. And I, I was at one one time, like at a carnival. Really? And all there was a couple of little people, and and the rest was just all like bogus stuff. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that was it. Fake. I, it yeah. <laughs> You know, they try huh. to sucker you to pay, like, an extra buck, and you can go in the back room and see something. And all it was was, like, some kind of robot thing that wiggled its legs. It wasn't oh, even... Oh, God. And that's classic carny stuff. They yeah. get you in that back room to look at something else to get an extra buck out of you. Right. And that's usually, like, where they would put, like, you know, the half-man, half-woman, or something like that, something lame that yeah. we'll talk about. And, um... Yeah, pretty much ruined his career. Um, a, wow. a lot of the people that, even the sideshow performers that performed this movie, some of them had good experiences, some of them absolutely hated it and thought it was exploitive. And I guess that's all just like an individual choice. If you felt like you were being exploited, I guess it was exploited. Yeah, I, I mean, even even today, I yeah. mean, it, you know, so I could see some people looking at it and thinking yeah. that. Because my wife actually know. won't watch this. I've tried to like show her. She's yeah. just like no interest in watching these human right. oddities at well, all. Because she kind it. of feels that way. But that's not yeah. the point of the movie if you actually sit and watch it. Right. You know, the monsters are, are you and I, the regular people yeah. that are in this movie. And Oh, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and... Um, Revenge. That's all I'll say, and we'll yeah, get to uh, that. We get the we get the sideshow code, <laughs> and um, you know, but but by today's standards, you know, modern horror fans watch just go, "What's a big deal?" You know, go ahead, go find some people like this and try to get this movie made just like this. And you're not going to do it. No. So it's it's a special movie um, yeah. with special people, special and, history. And, you know, it's yeah. not makeup. It's not you know, it's it's not David Lynch's Elephant Man with some guy in makeup. These are right. real people. Yeah, and. That's what makes this movie unique and in a class all itself. Exactly. That's the history on Freaks. <laughs> now let's talk about the movie. Yeah. Man, you get you knew a lot of information, man. I hardly even had to look at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> he memorized them. No. But, um, yeah, very cool. Yeah, I love this movie, man. I it's important. It's an important movie. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. It did. And, and I, I don't think anything even close to it was made after it. I mean, like you said, this is one of a kind off to the side and... You don't yeah. got anything like that, man. And now anymore, it's considered, but... you know, very, you know, a historically important movie. Yeah. You know, it's, and I think because maybe at that time they couldn't understand, you know, it was all just exploiting these these special people, yeah. different people. Right. Now we can watch it, and we're able to, you know, empathize a little bit more. I think. Than, yeah. Than and break we were down back the then. story, which yeah. starts off starts off with the Barker, the uh, Barker at the uh, circus pull, pulling the people in. And, Telling um, them the story about this brings them to the like this. The, the, it's like a down, box, and, a and box, you yeah. know there's something in there, but we don't get to see it. Yeah, he and, starts telling the story of. Yeah, I mean, like every every little sideshow, you know, has a history. Most of the time, made up. Right. But uh, and then we're gonna and then it segues into the movie proper, where you know we're yeah. gonna learn how this all happened. Exactly. And it's yeah. I think it's the Rollo Brothers Circus, and we see Cleopatra. Um, uh, on the trapeze. Right. And we are introduced to Harry Earl playing Hans. Hans. Uh, small dim- midget, I guess you could say, if that's yeah. if that's okay to say. He said it in the movie. We can say it here. Okay. Yeah. Good enough for me. Yeah. And uh, his 
fiance Frida, yeah. uh, in real life, they were brother and sister. Oh, yeah, they, they come from. Uh, uh, See, I don't she, know everything. I, I know his, the movie. I love the movie, but I don't know. His real name was Kurt Schneider. Her name wow. was was um, Daisy. Okay. And uh, I've seen her before on some other mm-hmm. stuff too. Yeah, she so. she she actually made a, a big name for herself. She she had been in stuff, hmm. and even the other fella had you know like I said Wizard of Oz yeah. and and some of the Lon Chaney movies. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were from Germany, a, a family. Uh, there are four of them that were little like that. Huh. And they were called like the the doll family or the living dolls, and. Travel me. around. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, tra- you know, travel around in, in Europe, and they were, I think, picked up by uh, Ringling Brothers. Okay. Kind of started doing an act there, and then transitioned over to Hollywood. But it's kind of oh. funny because they play, you know, people that are going to get married in yeah. the movie, but they were actually brother and sister in yeah. real life. Oh, hey. And it's hard they, to get. Um... Their name was changed after the guy that kind of brought them here uh, to America. His last name was Earl, and and that's how they got they okay. changed their names to be a little bit more Americanized. Okay. Yeah, but um, let's see. What, yeah, Hans is pretty much the the breakdown of the story is that he he sees he's Cleopatra a, as she's a grown woman, yeah, and he's and enamored with her. He, he all, see, he's, even though his fiance is right here, he's like she's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and she's so understanding as Freda, the smaller. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, her pickings are probably pretty slim there in the circus, you yeah. know. So <laughs> it's like I better yeah. hang on to what I've got. <laughs> But but she was understanding. I mean, you know, I mean, and she Very. kept and she kept warning him, you know, that yeah. hey, this woman because I mean, the breakdown of this movie is revenge, 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 yeah. and the, through the carny life and the sideshow life. So, so but, she um, uh, she notices him noticing her, right, and starts playing it up a little. And you're like, lets her cape fall, and he Asks picks him, it up, and, and she wouldn't bend down, right, to and, let him. And she he's like, you know, this you is laughing at me, and, laughing at me, yeah, and. I, I forgot exactly what she said, but she eventually, you know, bends down so that he can put it on her. Right. And um, and and she just like blatantly like this is all like right in front of Frida, you know, like yeah. no shame at all in what she's doing. And uh, Frida's a like oh, she's yeah. also like a little bareback rider on a little pony, and you know, just gives her a little snot look when when she rides out to go do her performance. Yeah. And that's kind of a little end of that beginning scene. Yeah, they the, all the the normal people kind of through in this movie look at them and they're laughing, laughing at them and right. see that she's taking advantage and they're just getting a kick out of it. Right. You know, which is kind of lousy, but um, you know, and that's where that's how it's gonna go. Yeah. And uh, the next yeah. scene is the like there's a little forest area and I think uh, maybe the guy who owns the property yeah. and the caretakers like you know there's a bunch of freaks on the property they should he says something like they should smother them at birth <laughs> you know? oh my god yeah and uh, it's it's a whole menagerie of people we see um, the pinheads yeah are there and, and the pinheads are um, I, I've got some information here the main one in the movie is one called uh, Slitzy Slitzy yeah. Um, I mean, this is a, a disease that they had called uh, microcephaly. Sorry, I have to look at a few things here and there. Mm. But um, basically what happens is kind of like you, you get a tapering of the skull as it goes up. Right. And it gets, oh, not to a point, but uh, sort of. to it. And that cr- causes the brain to be, you know, compressed, smaller. Right. Uh, so usually you would have a short stature, um, severe mental retardation. Like right. in, in this movie, Slitzy. Who always wears a dress, and they treat her as a girl, but it was really a man, really a male. And the reason he wore the dress is because he had terrible incontinence, and it was just easier to keep uh, him clean that way. Okay. And all of these, uh, like the pinheads here, they had like the mind of children. I mean, he, he right. had he had like the brain of a three year old, mm-hmm. and but he loved doing what he was doing, like in the movies mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It was so happy doing it. Oh yeah. Uh, very little's known about exactly where he was born and when he was born. Mm-hmm. He was handed off from carnival to carnival, owner to owner. Um, but I mean, he lived to be like almost eighty years old, I think, and wow. you know, performed in the circuses and the parks for people. Loved the attention, and hey, he even did like simple magic tricks on stage yeah. and stuff like that. Um, cool. And um, what was I just gonna say? Uh, but each of them had like their own little like handler that would take care of them, almost like a nurse that would take right. care of them on, on, on the sets. Okay. Um, but um, from what I, I've heard and read that this particular person was just a joy to be around. Um, you know, always like impish and playful. And, yeah. And you can even get that in the movie. Oh, yeah, you there. see it, yeah. Uh, we also see uh, the half-boy, uh, Johnny Eck. 
who was born, um, I, I forget the name of the condition he had, but basically it, he wore clothes to make it look like he had no bottom half. Yeah. And he did actually have legs and feet, but they were so diminutive and malformed. Right. Um, so it so, basically looks like a torso because of the right. clothing and how it So basically he like walks on his hands. And I, I gotta say, he's probably the most striking one, I think, out of all of them. When you see him just doing that. Oh, yeah. And, and walking. How on fast his hands. he goes? Right. The, the, the strength he must have to be able to. Right. Climb the stairs. He was actually kind of like a handsome guy. You look at him in the face and stuff. Yeah. I mean, he's, he was actually a twin. Um, his his twin brother was perfectly normal, and um, they even got into like magic tricks. They would do like little. I was seeing an interview or a documentary on the, on the Freaks DVD how they would do a little, uh, like you know, like the sawing in half. Yeah. Uh, um, they had a little bit where like a magician oh. would be doing the sawing in half, yeah. right? And so they were they were look alike twins. They were identical twins, at least from here up. Right. And. Um, his brother, the normal one, would say something like, uh, you know, ah, it's a bunch of bunk, you can't really do it. And he'd say, well, come on up here. And wow. um, Johnny Act, the half-boy, would already be, like, in the head part. Yeah. <laughs> and they would have, somehow they would do something with the box where, you know, when, when the, the normal brother got in, he, he slipped out. And another small person got would have, come in with pants that would just cover his heads. And the guy hey, you're giving up magic tricks, secrets. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. Right. And he would do the sign, yeah. and then when he would come up, you know, you know, I'll pop Johnny on his hands and like, hey, where's my legs going? And the other small would wave the leg. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I wish I could. Say that was hilarious. That's pretty you good, know? man. Um, and yeah, they had a pretty, you know. Well, a lot of these people ended up in such bad shape in the end. My God, you know what? Here, I'm going to get a cup of coffee, and I'm just just gonna, listen to me. I'm going to just listen to Ted today, man. <laughs> ended up dying broke. He's I think. got a lot of information going. You know, they, they which started, is cool. Yeah, I mean, wow. Well, he ended up broke, huh? A lot of them did. Oh um, yeah. I'm he and his brother, they they had a couple of businesses that failed, and um, you can't. Get but he was rich always good, like it. talking to people. Like fans would come to his house and and talk to him. But then yeah. I think I, I read something in, in one of these books where there was a. Uh, uh, a robbery at his home and hmm. it was pretty brutal and after that he just kind of like became a shut in and you know didn't really want to have anything to you know do with any yeah. fans or anything anymore so yeah, I could see that uh, who I mean, else do we see in that scene the human torso we see briefly he gets one of the best scenes in the movie oh, uh, which they God. cut a little bit actually really? okay. which we'll talk about but yeah, a so, so you see like a bunch of them right there and, yeah. and the guy said you know the guy that owns the property is actually very understanding, you know, he and he sees okay, them, you know, yeah. and the lady who's kind of taking care of the uh, the pinheads, I don't know if it's, well, that's what they call them, so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she says, they're like children. She says, they're just like children. They're like children. And he was fine. He's like, you know, please stay, you know, make, you know, as yeah. long as you like. So there, there's some decent human characters in this movie. Yeah, yeah. But you do see, for the most part, that the people that are different do get joshed a little bit more. Right. Uh, the that we see the the man, the half man half woman coming up in the they go back to the carnival scene and a couple of guys they they start making fun of her. It's it's mm-hmm. Josephine Joseph. Yeah. Walking by. Although yeah, I mean the face. I mean this isn't somebody you would think half man half woman. Because, yeah, I mean, there's there's very few uh, real hermaphrodites. Yeah. Um, in the carnival world, what would it, it would usually be just a female impersonator, a man who's a female impersonator, right? And he would work out one side of his body, <laughs> yeah. tan one side of his body, and then get flabby on the other side. You know, have a little bit of a boob, <laughs> um, and and dress in that particular way. Yeah, and you, they could usually like kind of like pull it off. So yeah. As, as far as Josephine Joseph, I don't think anybody really knows for sure if she was a true hermaphrodite or not. Yeah. Um, and actually, after she was one of the ones that didn't have a good experience on this film. And after this movie, I, th- I think there's like no documentation. Nobody really knows what happened to her after oh. this. She just kind of got fed up with the he, she, whatever. Yeah. Got fed up with the life, and because um, she she was actually a most of these people were carnival performers. He took yes. them right off of the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. yeah, they had a huge casting call, and and they, you know, a lot of the. You know, sideshows wanted to get their you know person in the movie. So yeah, like later on when um they say jo- oh, Josephine um she, she likes you, but I think the Hercules or somebody I yeah I think was, she likes he you, goes, but, but he d- wants to or he uh, doesn't he doesn't something like that or, or they say something like you know uh, you know yeah th- 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 there's the other two guys and they're just teasing yeah. you know you know. You know, light your cigarette. You know, just drop your lipstick, and yeah. <laughs> you know, just and she never says anything. He, there there you know, are a lot of little one-line dialogues right. that are really pretty cool. That I I can't 
remember offhand. Right. But you, that's that's another. I mean, watch the movie. There's a lot of cool yeah. dialogue between the, you know, mm-hmm. each person. And the stutter comes up next. Yeah, too, uh, Roscoe. He and another main character that we're going to see a lot in the film who plays a big role is Hercules. Doesn't he? T- he takes a bra off, doesn't he? So he must be kind of yeah. I think he's like playing, a woman. Yeah, or, they have like a little clowny kind of comedy act, and. Um, the same thing, Josephine Joseph walks by, and, 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 and Roscoe has a stutter. And it's yeah. like, you know, I the, 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 think uh, she likes you, but he doesn't. Yeah. And you know, then they start, you know, And laughing. then talking to Hercules, the, the big guy, you know, the strong guy, which um, right. he's kind of in cahoots with Cleopatra in this movie. Exactly. You know, they're... How it's going to turn out is, is it yeah. turns out that Hans, you know, he, he's pretty thrifty with his money. With uh, Cleopatra, you know, she'll come out and say, "Oh, can I borrow another?" I think this takes place in Europe somewhere. Can I borrow yeah. another thousand francs? And you know, he's just—he's so enamored. Yes, yes, he's, he's buying her gifts, and um, you know, it's going to be found out later on that he actually has quite a bit of money. Yeah, which which made me wonder early on, not dissecting the movie, but why he's why is he in the carnival if he's got all this money? Because they do show him later. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I am curious. Well, I but, think but, he uh, only, it's like an inheritance, and I think he only kind of like more recently inherited the money. Could be. Um, okay, yeah. You know, maybe they have a commitment to the circus, they have to do this, but... but and maybe he did like it, and he was with uh, Freda. Right. And, I mean, you know, the whole... For a lot of people, else. this was how they made their living, you yeah. know? I mean... Um, and I, I think, like, you know, you hear different stories. You hear some people treated very poorly. So I, I've read in, in this, you know, like, very special people book, like... If you watch the the Elephant Man movie, you think, "Oh, what a horrible life he had!" But you read this, and you find that he was actually treated very well. I mean, he kind of like yeah. made his own decisions. You know, if he was going to be with the sideshow or not. Right. You know, he went with the doctor willingly because he said maybe you know they wanted to study him. And um, mm-hmm. you know, it sounds like for the most part, you know, like in the John Merrick case, he was well treated. Hmm. Um, you know, I and. He, any sideshow that had him, that was kind of like their prized possession. They treated oh, him yeah. very well. Yes, so, yeah, um, because you know, those money are money makers. Yep. So, but then you hear stories that you know people that weren't treated so. So I'm sure it's both ways. Yeah. Uh, what do we get to next in the movie? Well, it's, doesn't uh, is it Cleopatra or Venus? Venus. That, yeah, she she's in. I don't know why she's in um, Hercules. I guess they had a relationship. They, you know, they have a little relationship Strange. going on. Strange. Yeah. And uh, I think she's just tired of him. He's you know taking her money and. He's you know mooning around with yeah, other ladies in the circus. Tells her to get out or whatever, and he's spraying his perfume and all oh, that yeah, stuff. And don't know. try to come back later tonight <laughs> yeah. either. And she decides to go back to her wagon. Like, and that's what goes on. Like everyone goes back to their wagon from wagon to wagon. Right. Yeah. Everyone's got their own. It's their own little community. Yeah. Uh, and that's where she uh, is talking to Frozo. Frozo the clown. Frozo the clown. Why do I keep going Frozo? Or whatever? It's but Frozo. yeah, he, he's finishing Frozo. his act, taking his makeup off, and she yeah. just kind of unloads into him. Yeah. You know, just because he happens to be a guy and yeah. he's standing there. <laughs> And, yeah. But you can tell they're going to strike up kind of a little relationship. Yeah, I mean, he, he kind of lets her unload for a little bit. He doesn't even say anything. No. And after she's done, he's like, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to let that <laughs> slide. <laughs> go I'm going to go tell her a couple things. Yeah, and he, you know, he even says, you know, you know, you're not so bad to look at. You know, cheer up, kid. It's not so bad. And, yeah. you know, I think once he takes all his makeup off, she sees he's not so bad. And they're going to strike up a little friendship and, and a little romance later on. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. then he, he gets he out comes of out of the wagon and yeah. bumps into the uh, Siamese twins uh, the, the two girls this I, I got some info on these guys too this this okay. is actually a very sad story okay. um even though they they did well but this is um, the Siamese twins in this movie are uh, violet and Daisy uh, Hilton mm-hmm. and um, they were born in England day after my birthday and like born in England yeah born in England um Brighton. And they were the first conjoined twins in England that survived more than just a few weeks. Okay. So that's historic on that point. They yeah. were born of a mother, an unwed mother who was like a barmaid. Mm-hmm. And she basically sold the Siamese twins to her boss who owned the bar. And her last name was Hilton. And that's, they huh. took the name. The lady that, you know, that was kind of her boss, they, uh, she kind of saw money-making potential in them right away. And pretty much, I mean, the the one book I've got here has pictures of them from a baby to young girls to, you know, like maybe, you know, puberty, teen, low teens, yeah. and then, like, how they look in the, in the film. Um, conjoined so, so they conjoined were, at the they, hip. Yeah, they, exactly. Joined at the hip. And kind of, be, 
almost like a godsend in that they were able to move, at least, you know, in, in unison together, they were able yeah. to move. You know, a lot of conjoined twins, you know, you've seen people like joined at the head and things where it's not really easy right. to move. Um, you know, these they girls were able could to do walk, it. yeah. Yeah, and, and actually, the, the lady who, I'm going to say owned them, because yeah. these girls were kind of, you know, even though they were out in the public eye and, and had a career, like yeah. in vaudeville and stuff before this movie, long it's before It's almost like movie, having a contract on them, you know. They, they were pretty much kept sequestered and, and, and enslaved um, wow. behind closed doors. But they were given huh. music lessons, dancing lessons, and, and, you know, they even worked with, like, Harry Houdini and Bob Hope before they took off and got really big. And Trying to take advantage of their... Well, I mean, just, you know, you know they, they, they were around. People knew who they were back then. Yeah. They, you know, they, they had been around the circuit, and, wow. um, you know, they did a the little bit in this movie, and... Even afterwards, like when they became 17, 18, they, they were able to legally emancipate themselves from, from uh, this lady who owned them and get a manager. And, you know, they had relationships. I think both of them maybe had been married briefly, but they were kind of like sham weddings. And, you know, yeah. um, and they had like this ability to kind of like shut the other one out. Like if, if one of them was, you know, with their husband. So yeah, speak, that's the strange thing. They could kind of, this, and yeah. there's even a great part in the movie. In yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, mean, I think so. these these girls have some of the best scenes in the movie. But yeah, um, yeah. The, the the tail end of the story mm. is you know even though they did pretty well and they made good money for themselves during that time, mm-hmm. but through whatever mismanagement or poor decisions, they ended up uh, in Florida working in a grocery store together. Really? And um, I guess mm. they hadn't reported to work for a couple of days, and their boss called the police to go check their apartment or house wherever they lived, mm-hmm. and they were found dead. Um, this was in 1969, and okay. uh, they died of like some an Asian flu that was, maybe had been going around the time, but it was determined like medical examination, autopsy or whatever that okay. huh. uh, Violet, I believe, had died first, and then or whoever had died first, the other one died like two to four days later. Okay, so one of them was conjoined to a, a dead twin for two to four days. So they must have they at least in their fifties. Oh, up to maybe 60, even older than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, older than that. Um, they were so, born, I think, in. Maybe either early 1900s or like the very tail end of the 1890s. Okay, so yeah, they must have, yeah. So, so. yeah, I mean, a lot of them had long twins. Life. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they did all right. Right, and, and you know, they just had the fortunate thing to be conjoined where they were, like at the bottom of the back, spine, hip, wherever they were. And, yeah, nowadays um, they might have been able to have surgery performed on them, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, you know, back then, if they tried to do it normally, one of them died, yeah. or it depended on if, you know, sometimes they didn't know if they were sharing an organ or not. Well, like, the, the most famous Siamese twins, the... Chang and Aang? Yeah, or? Chang and Aang, they said they could have been surgically, and they would have both survived. Right. They it's, just, they didn't want to. Mm-hmm. And, and they went on to have a very good life. Ah, with, Chang um, and Aang, they had, like, dozens of kids. Yeah, and stuff. I mean, and they... How weird of a situation is that, you know, to be... Oh, yeah. And we're going to talk about it here in the movie because yeah. actually the, the part that we're up to is where one of them is uh, uh, Daisy is uh, the married, stutterer is married to the stutterer Roscoe. Are they married or they're married? married. They, they are they married. are married. Okay, because yeah. um, he refers to the one as his sister in law in the movie, and you know he, he's saying you know they're, he's talking and, and Violet the, 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 the other sister is giving him sass. <laughs> yeah, you know he's you know. You, you can't be going out drinking all night. I'm tired of you getting drunk every night. And, and, and this is the part where he... Well, I, I'm not sure he says it here, but he, mm-hmm. he tells the, the other one, not the one he's married to, he, he tells the other sister, he goes, he goes, I'm not going to have my wife laying in bed half the day with one of your hangovers. Right. So, um, you know... <laughs> He's married to her, but her sister's getting drunk right. every night, and he's she's getting drunk too because yeah. she can't help it. So. And every time you know he wants, to and he's he, getting s- s- sick and tired of it. <laughs> he wants to you know spend time with his wife, and, and Violet's like, "No, I have to go. Come on, Daisy." And she just yeah, and can you imagine me. that? And I love how I mean, he always says, "Oh, you you always use as an, ex- <laughs> an alibi." <laughs> it's kind of like Portland Pig, an, an alibi. <laughs> Yeah, he does that a couple times. An, an alibi. I didn't. I don't. I didn't. Um, yeah, I didn't pick up on that. But I'll, 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 I'll go back and look at that. As an, an, an alibi. <laughs> oh man! But can you imagine? I mean, actually falling in love with. I mean, it's not like it's so tons bizarre. of other, but yeah, it's got to be so strange, especially later when we find mm-hmm. out that the other sister gonna get is going to get engaged and get married, and it's like, and, and he and they tell him he goes. 
well, why don't you stop over sometime? Oh, God, yeah. To, and he goes, well, why don't you stop oh, thank over you. You'll sometime? You'll have to come You'll visit have... us sometime. They're all going to be living together. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean. So fun. It is. It, it's, it's just real slick part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you this I love that. I, yeah, I love the stutter. He's right. He's, he's, right. Uh, kind of that's an unfortunate thing too, just stuttering. Oh, I, I've God, never known yeah. anybody with a stutter. Um, no, yeah, that's a bad. Yeah, you know, but I, I've heard people you know, have too. I remember yeah. hearing like Stuttering John on like Howard Stern. I used to listen to him when he was on free radio. Yeah, like back in the nineties, and how he would talk about being in school. Sometimes he would just say the wrong answer when he was called on because it was easier to say. Yeah. It's like I knew the right answer, but I couldn't say it. So right. I just you know, if the answer was four, I said you know two, you mm-hmm. know, because it was easier two. to say. Yeah, or something. So. Oh. But uh, well, apart from that, you know, it's just a. Uh, um, yeah, we get. Then to we the, get to uh, Hercules. He's gonna sneak back into Cleopatra's. Yeah, they're gonna uh, wagon. Kind of hook up there. Yeah, yeah that she's kind of talking about all the money that she's getting from her little admirer. She's got some lingerie. Yeah, you know, she's got some wine. Yeah. yeah, you know, and you know, they're gonna start hatching a little thing going on here. Like, you know, see what you can get from him. You know, get a little yeah. bit more. Get a little bit more. And, and at um, this point, I don't think they know that he has as much money as No, he that's actually not till closer to the end. They just know that he's generous and he's right. giving. So Yeah, he says, you know, where's he getting everything. all that money from anyway? But, yeah. uh, you know, where's a little guy like that get all that money? Yeah. But he, he wants some um, Cleopatra, Hercules. Well, yeah, they start having her. a little relationship going. And, yeah. and start pretty and much. And when they're making out, mm-hmm. he and Cleopatra, they start kind of kissing, whatever. Josephine Joseph is standing mm-hmm. in the doorway just watching. And it's a cold-blooded scene. Hercules goes out there and just cold socks, you know. <laughs> That's Joseph right. And Joseph right in the yeah. face. Yeah. Joseph, yeah, the half yeah. man, half woman. I don't even know if he hit the male side. He <laughs> might have hit the female side, Josephine. Yeah, like, you know, gangster. Yeah. Boom. He cold cocks her right yeah. in the face. Yeah, brutal. So maybe that's why, you know, she, whatever, you know, kind of swore <laughs> off side shows over this. Because every it. scene that, you know, she is in, he's in, it's it, it's horrible. It, it's just getting made fun of and, yeah. and punched. And that is she don't true. get a good scene in the whole movie. That is true. She's she got the she's the low man or right. woman on the totem pole. And um, then there's another the, scene. The with low the, man yeah, or woman right, on the right, totem right. pole. Oh, okay. There's another yeah. scene. Haas <laughs> <laughs> afraid of sitting at the table. Yeah, and, and she's you know just trying to talk to him. And, and he's he, in deep thought. He's just deep thought because he's in love with. Cleopatra, right. man, he's he's going, man. I got a Hans, big woman. You have not been listening to me. And I, I mean, th- think about it. Think about if we had a beautiful woman, like we're you know five ten, mm-hmm. six foot, whatever you know, and we see a twelve foot woman. You know what I mean, man? Can you imagine? Anyways, okay, no. let's get back to. It. But yeah, they're in deep thought <laughs> and. Um, yeah, when, when I, I, he does exactly like what I do with my Because a 12-foot woman, you could climb up her, I mean, to get what you wanted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's there's a lot. You, okay. Yeah, you can have um, those little things on your shoes to dig in oh. and climb up. And <laughs> lasso. <laughs> uh, <laughs> rope climbing. I got a nipple. <laughs> um, he, he, gets, uh, he, he does something that I do with my wife all the time, and it's... Uh, you know, it's like, have you been listening to what you say? Oh. You know, have you been listening to what I'm saying? He's like, oh, I've heard what you said. You said, what was it you were saying? <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> that's me. Oh my but God. she's like, I'm saying you shouldn't smoke such a big cigar at night. He's like, if I want to smoke a cigar, I'll smoke a cigar. <laughs> well, he says, I'm a man. I can, if I want to smoke. Right. He, he's, he's, he's trying to prove And himself. I think that's he's... the issue of the, this scene in the movie that, you know, he's not a little boy. Even though they look like children, they're not. Yeah. He's, he's a full grown man and man he's feelings. not going to be bossed around. Right. And, you know, and and that's the thing with with Cleopatra. You know, just you know, oh, you should cute little lambs. Can I have a thousand francs? You know, treat him like a child. Yeah. But he's so enamored, he doesn't see what she's right. doing. And but then, Freda does, and she's trying right. to warn him. So she's having a little conversation, Freda, uh, in in one of the next scenes that uh, you know she's hanging some laundry. You know, doing all your your, your circus people got to wash the, the yeah. underwear too. Yeah. And um, she starts, you know, kind of pouring her heart out to uh, Venus. Venus. You yeah. know how. You know, Hans just doesn't see. She's like, I see everybody laughing at him behind right. his back, but he doesn't notice it. And I feel bad for him. It hurts me that right. they're laughing at him. Yeah. So, um, you know, she kind of, you know, there's Poor no real Frida. solution to it. 
But uh, then I love the next part. Oh, yeah. When uh, this is the where they like start making fun. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a few guys playing poker you know, cards. or something at a table. And they start making some comments, I think, about like what clothes Cleopatra should be wearing. And he comes out there. He starts spouting out some German at him and calling him Schwein. Oh, yeah. and You Schwein. <laughs> yeah. You Schwein. And he's standing and out he's there. he's got that high-pitched munchkin type voice. Yes. And it's just And he's like, not taking no crap. I mean, no. he's, he's putting his chest out towards them. Mm-hmm. And they're just laughing at him. Um, and and she goes and you know does oh, the, like, oh my yeah shoulder. oh my shoulder can you rub it yeah and she puts her dress down so yeah, he's rubbing he's her skin down. he's like and, right above the crack <laughs> and, and he's just getting it and they're all laughing she's laughing they're all laughing it at is him. such a shame actually the poor guy poor Hans Hans in front I know I know but the guy's yeah, laughing man, he catches him making fun again he's you know, you know, oh, you know. he looks brutal. I mean, he's, he's, he's whatever. Like, it's all German, and he's just spouting it out. I wouldn't want him come running at me, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think someone yelling at you in German just is terrible. <laughs> Are you <laughs> trying? Oh. You know, I mean, he's just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, and then we, um, yeah, then they uh, a little bit more of the relationship developing between Venus Frozo. and Frozo. Frozo, um, not much really, but. No, no kiss and a romance. And, you know what? They're, really they're building should, up their friendship. Yeah, and, and, and this goes through the whole movie. It's like a slow build up to a yeah. We never to, get to a, much from it to a kiss and a hug later on. Right. That's pretty much it. It just but, builds up to like Johnny X showing up. He's the half boy again. Just comes walking up. They show him like a long shot walking up on his hands wearing gloves. Yeah. Hey, did you try that new gag I told you about? <laughs> and, but it's just so. He's got know. he's got very large hands to begin with. Yeah, whether, um, whether they're callous or that's just. He just strikes just me tough. the most, I think, out of so many of these. Just like when he just really fast hops up oh, those yeah. stairs in, in the wagon and just. And even when he runs through the like on the ground, I yeah. mean, it's so fast, and you're like, oh. I don't want to say disturbing. It's not. It doesn't disturb me. It's just. It's, it's just it's so strange. odd. It's it is so odd yeah, looking odd. to me. And you know, if you ever, I've never seen people like this in real life, really. And uh, right, you know, like you know, I've seen short people, I've seen small people. It's like the whole thing where the kids they can't help to look. You know, right. you don't make fun, but you can't help to look because it's mm-hmm. so different. It's like, odd. We went to the zoo today, Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, and, and the girl that checked us in, she was a, a little person. Really? Okay. And uh, as huh. we're walking away, my, my daughter kind of is like tugged at me. And it's like. There was something wrong with her. She was little. And I was like, well, honey, just like, you know, when we watch Big Chuck and Little John, same thing. You know, it's just, you know, she's a, just a normal, small. A normal parent would let their kid mm-hmm. know what's wrong. You and, know? you know, it, and I'm sure most of these people, you know, probably wouldn't even care if you asked them. As long as you weren't, like, making fun or anything. You'd be, you know, if right. a child was saying, you know, what's, why are you so little? I'm sure they wouldn't. Right, right. You know. And I, I like what Fro- Frozo, um, he's, he's got a little His thing. Little gag. He, he gives the um, Venus the big hammer. Like rubber mallet or yeah, whatever. I think that's the thing, he, um, the guy with the, what's his name, with the hands, when he came up. Uh, yeah, that's the gag he's, that Johnny uh, Eck was talking so about. So he said, hit my point. head, hit my head. So it's just big it's hammer. It's like a big suit. And he, she goes, plunk, and, and the, the suit goes up, and the head's Looks disappears. Looks like his head got knocked down. Good so, clown bit. Yeah, good clown bit. Kind of cool. So. You know clowns have to go to college, right? Do you know that? Yeah, there's a big yeah, one down right. in Florida. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm very good in juggling. Maybe I should have juggled here. I have juggling balls, uh, special juggling balls. But I, I, I can never... do the unicycle. I can juggle. Three of anything. Three of anything. Butcher knives? Well, you know, ex- I'm sorry, except knives or pins. <laughs> but I did a basketball, a mitt, and a baseball. Super high. Wow. I can do three basketballs. That's yeah, yeah, it's just practicing. You know, I, I yeah. got the juggling balls. I once you the get video. the once you get the three down, I mean, you you, you can kind of do three of anything. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting it down. Right, like That's I know in theory play. how to do it. You know, you got to throw right. them this way, not from hand to hand. Yeah, because yeah. I've got a British DVD video to show you how to do it. He's like, and don't throw it this way because it's just if rubbish. you throw it this way, yeah, it's going to fall over. But, well, it's yeah. just how he says, and don't throw it from hand to hand because it just looks rubbish. <laughs> it looks rubbish, <laughs> so. mate. Oh boy! And then, what yeah, that scene's yeah. over. Johnny kind of hops away, and um, now, who runs up? What's it? Well, she's um, the one that comes up next. And I've she got looks her like she's here. got the um, that disease where you age really fast. She's got one. Uh, I don't have her name here on my on my list here, but um, there was someone called the Bird Woman, um, right? And and in this movie, her name is Cuckoo, the Bird Girl. But the actual original Bird Girl. 
was um, this one that comes up in the movie and whispers in uh, Frozo's ear about something. Yeah. And actually, if and I know you were, you were watching the movie, mm-hmm. she, there's nothing physically wrong with her. She was just ugly. Okay. And she went on sunshine shows just because of that. She just happened wow. to be have goblin like appearance. Goblin, yeah. But there was absolutely no she had yeah, nothing she actually did, wrong she, with her. She did seem to talk okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um her issue was just, she was just ugly. Yeah. And yeah. the news that spread through the um side show was that um the bearded woman had given birth. Yeah. And her husband And they don't show the baby. They he just No, goes, no, they never He goes do. in and he just lifts up the blanket and goes, What is it? Um what did he say? Uh, is a girl. And he's like, oh, you know, I think Frozo says, oh, he's gonna have a, she's gonna have a beard like mommy. Right, that's what he said. Right. Yeah. And the bearded oh. woman was named uh, Olga Roderick. This is actually an interesting story. Her real name was Jane Barnell. I believe she's American. And you know, when she was born, you know, a couple, you know, four years old, whatever. I mean, he had that facial hair going. And um, so she was really. And people back then just didn't know how to deal with this kind of stuff. Right. So she. While the dad was away on business, mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly what he did for a living, mm-hmm. the mother sold her to, um, I've got it written here, guys. How um, times have changed. Well, actually, Sold her no. to, at the age of four, to the Great Orient Family Circus and Menagerie. Mm. And they basically took her, went to Europe, were on tour over in like Germany, Berlin. Wow. And the, the father actually tracked her down, came out to Berlin, found her. And took her back, took her back home, and huh. I think it was like his mother, you know, the child's grandmother that yeah. you know she ended up living with and raising. But yeah. um, um, she especially, I think, didn't you know have a very good upbringing. I think she, you know, as as older on in her teens, late teens, she did try shaving and worked as a nurse for a little while. Uh, what I read said something kind of bad happened while she was working as a nurse, and she just decided to go back to the carnival sideshows. She had done that prior. Um, Went and then to got into the mo- yeah got into the movie this way and I don't think there's much else after that um, wow. but uh, it, I do have that she was married four times okay so the guys um, did not like to shave her beard uh, I guess not and there's a cool extra on the on the DVD of uh, I can't you remember. think the guy kept saying honey please go and shave I don't know. Okay. But they do an interview with a woman. I think her name was Jennifer Miller, and, and this is modern day, you know, or at least when the DVD came out back, uh-huh. maybe ten years ago or something. I know I bought it the first day it came out. Yeah, and um, you know she had a full beard, mustache, uh-huh. and this is today, you know, where they can do things about that. Yeah, and um, you know what's it called? Hirsutism, I believe, when, yeah. when you grow hair, and you know she just it's a choice to keep that, and she works, you know, the carnivals, whatever. You know, I guess there's still some around. And uh, but in the movie, the bearded woman is married to, uh, forgive me, I can't remember his name, um, Peter Robinson, yeah. and he is the human skeleton, uh, fully grown. He weighed fifty eight pounds. Yeah, and, he, you, he walked funny. And isn't it so weird when he walks? Couldn't... It's like just a skeleton. Yeah, walking. he walked like a skeleton. Yeah, and you know he's going around passing cigars out yeah. and, and and all that. And in in real life, he married um, a woman that weighed over four hundred sixty pounds. Holy Moses. And had a couple of kids. Wow. So there you go. <laughs> you know what? I am. I hope you guys are enjoying this because uh, I am so glad we did this movie, man. Right. I, I, I'm learning so much about the Some of this, of this stuff movie. I knew, movie. but I kind of awesome. got the opportunity to dig a little deeper into it. Yeah, so. that's awesome, Little man. tidbits. I tried to have like little tidbits about all the, the main featured uh, characters in the movie. Yeah. So uh, I think... Um, we get back to Roscoe. Another one with Roscoe and the, and the Hilton sisters, yeah. the Siamese twins. The stutter. And, yeah, he's he's zipping them up. And this is where he says that that the hangover part. Gave you, That's the hangover, hangover part. part. Yeah. And and again, you know, You're she's like, in. "Come on, Daisy, let's go." And he's like, "No, no, no she, 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 she's staying <laughs> right here." And he's like, "No, I have to leave." Yeah. And he says that again. You know, you always just an alibi. Mm. Then we get, and see that's the thing with this movie. You got the main story, Hans and Cleopatra, right. but then it's all these little slices of life in Keeps, between, right? You know, and none of these parts that we're talking about really pertain to the story. It's just where you get a chance to see each one. It's like their own little. The, uh, you, they go from cart to cart, right. showing the lives of these right. side shows. So we go to the next wagon, and I forget her name, but she's a uh, a woman with no arms. And little small too. She's the, small. The, the too. little guy that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Do, do you, do, his name is Angelo Rizzidi, just a dwarf. But I, I still know. can't remember. You can't remember where he's from. If no. you've seen this movie, 
and Angelo Rizzidi, he, he the part where he's in this wagon with the uh, uh, no armed lady, they're pouring some wine, and she actually picks up the wine with her feet and, yeah. and bends down to drink it. That guy, mm-hmm. when I watched this, I mean, you know, I, I don't know if like the first time I watched it, if I put it all together, but I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, the Mad Max series. Master from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Remember the little guy that oh, rode on the big guy? Oh, no that's way. Master Blaster? That's, that's Holy. Master. Okay. Yep, that's him. Next time I look, yeah. Yep. And, and and it's the voice. His voice is exactly the same. Okay. So that, that's where you'll know this guy from if you're a fan of the Mad Max movies. Even way back in the 80s, you know, 84, 86, whenever Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome yeah. was made, back in 1932, this guy was in Freaks. So. Wow. Unbelievable! I knew it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, like you know, and he's been in other movies too. Yeah, but because um, really... I do remember him from like uh, he was in some other older mm-hmm. movies and stuff too. Yeah, he, he got I, a lot of work I can't, actually. Yeah, um, he'd been in a lot of the commercials and all kinds of things. He, he'd been in a lot of things. I don't think he was in Time Bandits. <laughs> I think like every you know little person in the world right. was in Time Bandits. I don't yeah. think he was in Time Bandits. No. But um, yeah, that's then, where, a familiar face that you know modern right. audiences might might recognize. And um, then we get to uh, what's oh his the name? human torso. His name human torso is um, I've got it here. Um, he's a black man. He is. He's, or um, I think he actually might have been like from India though. Like he might just really? be like really dark skinned from India. I, I thought you know what? I, I don't be, have it. Here, you though. could be right. Okay. Uh, but his name was uh, Prince Ramdian. Uh, I think oh. in the credits they spell his name wrong. Okay. But um, basically, he was born with no arms, no legs. Yeah, he's a torso basically, right. and he and, uh, he the. He would I'm wear not like say a tight the fitting. cool part, but the weird part, the odd part of mm-hmm. is how he inched his way around. Like he, he was, he could inch his body yeah, like, like a worm. Just rope. Yeah. And that's and how he would always go kind of on his side. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how a lot of people that had this condition went, that worked in the side shows were billed as like human worm, human torso, human caterpillar. And his very cool trick, he was able. Oh, to he wore do like a tight was, fitting, you know, sweater. So yeah. I mean, you couldn't see anything, and he would move. And yeah, he gets what he, he does could, he a could, cigarette. Yeah, light a cigarette with a match out of the old little pull out. You get a little matchstick, put it together, turn it upside down, flick it, light your cigarette, and yeah. he was good to go. All with his mouth, <laughs> his trick, man, all with his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And what they cut out of the movies, he actually rolled that cigarette too. He did ah, that. Okay. He, and well, that would have taken some time. Right. Maybe I can understand why they cut that out. I would have just loved to see the whole thing. Well, I um, would. They should bring out a version if they have it somewhere. But wish maybe gone. they don't have it. Yeah. Um, but um, he was actually pretty self sufficient. He was married, had five kids. Um, wow. His son was pretty much like his caregiver. He would like carry him around on set and help him with you know whatever activities of daily living he needed done. Yeah. And but he was actually pretty self sufficient. Um, I've got pictures in wow. the books. With him uh, shaving, he, he built mm-hmm. himself a box that had like a, a straight razor on there, and he could, you know, oh, kind of go like that and, okay. and, and shave. So he, huh. he was actually, in as much as he was able to, he was self sufficient. Yeah. Um, but just watching him light that cigarette, it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, my daughter is just sitting there like, so, yeah, it's you know, amazing what they can do. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, just the to overcome. To overcome, yeah. and how you know a lot of these folks don't see it as disabilities. You know, they just do things a little bit of a different way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then uh, we get Schlitz, Schlitzy again. Schlitzy, yeah. Where um, uh, what's his name? Frozo's. You know, I'm gonna go to Paris and get you a hat with a big feather on it. And well, he's he's raving about her pretty, pretty dress. dress. Look at Schlitzy's yeah. got a pretty dress. Like I don't know on. if people who were watching this movie back then realized that that was actually a man, but yeah, um, Schlitzy. Very often played a girl because yeah. oh they put her in dress put him in dresses yeah but I I gotta say he's just kind of cute guy I mean like I probably would yeah, like to yeah. hang out with him a little bit you know it looked like he was as long as he didn't get mad and hit you I mean you know, it just looked like you know he, he looked very loving he, right he, he did he looked like he loving. could make anybody smile yeah like he was having fun and I like he was like, happy yeah like that. <laughs> right. Did um, a little curly Joe. Yeah, you know? curly Joe. <laughs> Ow, that hurt. <laughs> Stop it already. Boy. And then um, it goes to another scene, just another little slice of life scene with another, uh, I thought I had her name here, maybe I don't. No arms, but the legs. This is a different one. Oh, she, forgive me, I don't have her. But um, She's kind of pretty, I too. Her, Fran- pretty her first name was Francis. Okay. And her scene's a little bit better because she's 
you know, like cutting and eating meals with with a fork, with yeah, her dining fork and knife table. at the table, picking up her glass of beer and drinking it yeah. with with just her feet and just you know, just really amazing stuff. You know, I mean, but I guess you got to look at you know those people were born that way and that's all they knew. You know that, right? You know, if you don't have arms, that's that's all you know is yeah. how to do things like that. You do everything with your feet. So yeah. I guess when you go online and you watch someone playing guitar with their feet, and you think how amazing that is, well, for them, that's all they ever knew how to do. Right. So to them, it might not be quite so amazing, but um, to us, it is. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just you know, again, just to overcome. And there's still people born like that today. And right. Yeah. And then we go to the scene with Hans in. Hans. The, oh yeah, he's mixing up some champagne. Or oh yeah, he's like got that. some weird, yeah, some weird mixer in the bottles where they would go like this, and it would yeah, mix yeah. up the drinks, you know. And he's you know, giving it just, to Cleopatra. Yeah, it's just illustrating more of him, you know, doting on her, her and, and spending money on her, and you just know. I mean, even even a five year old, my daughter, wine knew and dine. That. She kept saying, "Is she really like him?" And I'm like, yeah. "No, I go. She just wants his money." Yeah, and how he's not? Yeah, he just doesn't get it. Doesn't but, um, see. Not until the end. Else sees it. Yeah, and. um I think but, then there's another little scene with uh, Frozo and, and Venus. And it looks like he's, um, it's actually cool. Yeah, it's a it looks cool like he's, he's sitting in a bathtub. Looks like he's in a bathtub Taking a bath washing. Out, and, out in the yard. Because yeah. he's, he's like messing with something down there. Like he's <laughs> washing the soap and the rag and stuff right. like that. And here, it's he's not. He's really putting fixing a wheel and he a ducks down under it, comes out. And he's basically telling her, um, oh, I forgot all about the yeah, date. Yeah, we had she a got date. all dressed up, man. I had this idea. I got to work on this. And Yeah, oh, my. Yeah, she even uh, says that I got all dolled up for this. Frozo, what is wrong with you? Yeah, she's a cute girl. She actually kind of reminds me. He's got his shirt me. off, and he's, go yeah. ahead. I was just going to say, she actually kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Fay Ray. You know, like yeah, King Kong. Yeah, a little Kong-ish. bit. She yeah. kind of has that little. Fay she's Ray got was, the look. Fay Ray was prettier, but. Yeah, but still, but, but she's got the hair, the the, the that hat style hair and the from style, King yeah. Kong, and more nineteen twenties than well, this is thirty two, so close enough, right. anyways. But um, yeah, he's got his shirt off, and this is where they first day like uh, connect, and he kisses her, and right. he's going, "I wanted to do that for so long." We've all had that and experience she's, before. <laughs> It's just oh, I've been sitting here for weeks. But yeah, but yet he was it. sitting there fixing that thing and forgot yeah, about the date. Yeah, he could have been getting some smooching going on. But you know? but yeah, he's, he's not such a bad looking kid. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you gotta get a shirt on. But yeah, yeah, you know. he's like ah, he's got his big barrel <laughs> chest sticking out. And then after that, we get to the scene that Dino and I were talking about with the the Hilton sisters, the Siamese twins again, yeah. where Violet is now getting engaged to a fella, <laughs> and uh, and it, it is cool because this is kind of what I was talking about before about them. And I read this in, in, in the books here about them being able to shut each other out while yeah. something was going on. And uh, Daisy's ah. just sitting there reading a book. Yes. But then something happens, and I, I don't think I've read anything that they could actually do this. Because it, it happens a couple times in the movie where um, uh, a fella goes up to, like, you know, Daisy and pinches her on the shoulder, but uh, Violet can feel it. Yeah. And in, in this scene, uh, he's giving her a kiss, and... And Daisy stops reading, and she's you know, just like, oh, like she taking it in. Like I don't could. think they could actually do that. Yeah, um, I wonder. From what I, I mean, even even nowadays, the twins actually right. say, "I can feel." Yeah. So if I'm wrong know. and someone knows it, you know, please, you know, let me give me a shot. Let me know if I was yeah. wrong or not. But from what I was reading the last few days, I, I didn't stumble across anything where they could actually do that. Yeah. But yeah, he was to look like a kind of a suave looking man too. You yeah, wonder, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like I wouldn't have trusted him, but. Uh, <laughs> Then uh, oh, Roscoe know, shows back up, and and that's the part we were talking about where you know he says they're going to get married and <laughs> shake hands. They shake hands. He's like, "You're going to have to come visit us sometime." <laughs> oh, the thing you're going to have to come visit <laughs> see us. <laughs> see us <laughs> <too."> <laughs> and it's like really. And they're, both, they're both smiling like, "Oh my God, our married life." Oh, how yeah, odd. Oh, I know. I, I mean, just can't and, get and over. I that. guess the thing is, you know, these girls actually did get married. How just odd. Yeah. You know, I mean. What a weird! And, 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 I mean, the marriages didn't work, right? But how? But there have been cases where it had, like Chang and Ang. Yeah, they were both married and had the pictures I got in this book. There's like there's like twenty eight kids around. Oh them. yeah. I mean, they, and the thing with them, they got I, busy. It, the thing is, they they could have been separated too. I mean, I, they could have been separated, lived their own lives, but they decided not to. It's just a special know? connection, I guess. I mean, yeah. everything that I've ever heard, I mean, and you've seen some even on Dr. Phil and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and which is about the only time I watch a show like that is if there's something cool like that on. I hope so, or so. something different, I should say, not cool, yeah, but different. I hope so. Um, you know, it's just... Yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. it's a connection that if you're not like that, I guess you just don't understand. And yeah. um, 
But I think the next part of the movie is where uh, Frida kind of confronts, confronts Hans him, yeah. about what's going on. And it's like, you know, I just want you to be happy if this is what you want. Go for it, you know. And then Hans kind of says, I should have told you all this from the beginning. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, she warns him, though, that, you know, they're just making fun of you. And yeah. you know, it, it hurts me to see this happen to you. But if you're happy, then then fine. Mm-hmm. And 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 there's Frida goes and um, confronts Cleopatra. Yeah, and tells her the same thing. You know, says, why are you doing this? Hercules is in there. He goes and hides in the corner. Yeah, he darts around. The, yeah, yeah, she just and that this is the scene. You know, when she's confronted, is where she spills the beans that he has recently inherited a lot of money. Yeah, and, and she's and Cleopatra's like. You just see the close up of her face, yeah. and she's like, "Oh my god, really? Money hungry. She's yep. on a mission now, man. Yeah. She's gonna get all that cash." And you know, after after uh, Freya leaves, and Hercules comes back out, and they're talking, and you know, she, the plan is in motion. You know, we could get, you know, he he'll marry me. Yeah. You know, and she says, you know, she says that you know midgets aren't strong. Something could happen to him. Yeah. And now you know where the movie's going. What yeah. what she wants to do. Yeah. So um, we don't that, actually see the wedding, but then we get to oh like, the big wedding the, feast. The most memorable scene, scene in, of in the, the movie, film yeah. is the you know, and you've seen it spoofed in South Park, Simpsons, and all this you know, yeah. Google gobble, Google gobble, one of us, one, one of, of us. us. Yeah. It, it, I mean, even if you've never seen this movie, you've probably heard that little bit before. Yes. And, uh, and the big thing is the the cuckoo girl dancing on, on the, the table. table, and the She's cuckoo doing girl, the, cuckoo, you know, the bird girl. I got a little stuff girl, on yeah. her. She just had like a weird skeletal disease, um, and if you can see some pictures of her, I mean, just her eyes were real small, her head was kind of enlarged up here, yeah. but um, she had like a weird beak like nose, and. Um, it so, looks so, almost like the the age disease, like the yeah. You remember those? almost like that. I remember you know? seeing those like on Real People and stuff when, yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. Uh, or is that what that show is called? Real People, Bro, or that's incredible. Oh, or Ripley's like Believe that. It or Not. Yeah, or one of those like shows. Yeah. Um, and the only thing I kind of found about her is that she was kind of taken out of a, a mental institution where she had been um, for some because this also this also caused some retardation as well and again shuffled from circus to circus and i think even as late as the 60s or 70s she was still performing in coney island wow. still alive so wow. um, yeah, no, no is... dialogue but that scene where she's just dancing on the table oh it's with the yeah. big hat with the big feather on top oh it's a very I'm memorable very yeah. memorable scene she's yeah. like a bird up there just dancing back and forth and right and they're all having fun and having all the big this is all this is only Pretty much the sideshow related people. Hercules right. is there as well. They're in the tent, big table, and um, drinking and yeah. Right. So then, and they show off to the side. They show Cleopatra actually dumping under the table and pouring a little vial of what you know is poison into right. the bottle of champagne. Right, and giving it to Hans to drink. So yes. there, you, you know how that's going. And trying um, to kill him. You know, him. even a good sport as she is, you still got Freda sitting down at the end of the table. You know, watching all this. Just looking with, uh, yeah, disparity. And yeah. Just going, and oh, and, my God. And we get to see a couple scenes of a, a sword swallower, yeah. a fire eater, uh, stuff like that. And they get, like, a good close-up on just about everybody at the yeah, table. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And I think one of They're the all big, having fun. Well, right. You know, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a big deal. And, <laughs> it's a big party. Uh, then, um, you know, everyone's drinking, and, and Hercules basically... Grabs Cleopatra and just starts making out with her right there at the table, right yes, in front of Hans. He does not care. And um, you know, they, they, they both actually, they just, they don't care. They're right. just like, aha, they're laughing at him. And exactly. She's afraid yeah. ends up just getting up and leaving. And this is where we get the, the gooble gobble, gooble gobble. They oh, pour yeah. a, a big bottle of champagne into a big, like, punch bowl. And it's, it's you know, we accept her, one of us, referring to Cleopatra. We accept her, one of us, one of us. She's mm-hmm. getting a horrified look on her face yeah, as this is going disturbed. on. And it's almost like communion. Everyone takes a little sip. Yeah. And it's, it's like a little, right. And, you know, the, the sideshow code, you know, it's kind of yeah. like if you hurt one of us. I don't know, this is not really for right. real. It's in the movie. Yeah. Um, you know, you I hurt one of us, you hurt all of us. And, I can see uh, that being a code actually in real life as circus. But I guess from yeah. when I was hearing, you, you know, from some to, of these man. other books I mean, and the documentary, there's, you know, a lot of them had very different ideas of things. And, yeah. Hmm. But they get a good view on every. You get to see all of them, and you know, yeah, I love the scene where the, the guy with just no 
the, the, the half boy. He's 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 got just he's on one hand. Yeah, swinging, he's swinging the, the knife around it's and like, gobble, gobble. He's balancing, man. Yeah, very, and um, oh. the guy that played Master and Mad Max, he's the one pouring the champagne into, on top into the, the table, glass. walking from person to person. Yeah, it goes to each one of them, and they take a little sip and. Um, when they get to her, oh. you know, she basically just gets up, calls them dirty, filthy freaks, yeah, you dirty, and takes filthy. it and throws it in his in in uh, Angelo Rosito's face, the the little dwarf. Yes. Um, and you know they're all horrified. They start backing away because yeah. you know they've all just been insulted. And, Her- and Hercules is kind of there too. Yeah. And then they just proceed to basically humiliate Hans. Um, you know, treating him like a little baby. I think she even puts him on her shoulders her hookers, and, yeah, and he walks and him around, parading around the table and singing. And you know, he even says, you know, you're, you're making me ashamed. And and you know, he realizes now that you know this was all a mistake. He's you know yeah. he's humiliated. They try to play it off in the wagon, like you know, we were drunk. I, I, there's nothing between us. And I he, told you, you don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, why he's there? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah, okay, I believe you. And you but, see, but, Hans kind of waver. Oh yeah, a he's, bit. he's he's poisoned. Right, you, know, he's you can feeling tell the effects of that. But this is where the big change in the movie, yeah, turns. This is the big final run of what's going on with the revenge and stuff like right. that. Because while that's a, going on, they're all peeking in the windows. This is you know, from this from this shows. point forward. You get a, a a view and image of these each one of these oddities these mm-hmm. freaks um coming and they're either staring at them cleopatra and hercules the rest of the movie right um what's his name's peeking through the window at them mm-hmm. angelo rosito yeah and and he finds out because he's peeking through the window he finds out that they're poisoning him yeah but, yeah through um, the course of events he finds out he's being poisoned yeah but they're just they're just and it's over, you know. They're like, out for revenge. Yeah, they're, they're they checking like in on what's going on. Cold they're breaking stares it down. from all of them. The rest of the movie, very eerie scenes, you mm-hmm. know, from, from every one of these characters. And and this is where the horror part comes through, you know, because right. it's it's turns it's a scary movie at this point on. Yeah, you know? I mean, Hans kind of just you know accepts the fact that you know, hey, I know why you married me, and you know. You know, Hans the Fool. Yep. And, um... And passes out, and they put him in bed. Yeah, he's laying in bed, and, you know, the doctor comes and realizes, you know... Because, you know, a couple of them are looking through the window or standing in the doorway while the doctor's there from, yeah. the, from the sideshow. And, you know, he states, you know, you know, what could have done this to him? He was like, poison. He was poisoned. Yep. Um, and everyone associated with the sideshow is just looking right at Cleopatra like no one's saying anything but they know if he was poisoned she's the one who did it oh, yeah. and I, I forget exactly I you know sometimes the sound in these old movies isn't so great right and it was hard to hear some they of said the something voices. gave gave him water of something and that saved his life I, I don't know what it was yeah you know. she may have uh, yeah what I, I can't remember yeah exactly but yeah. right so but I, but he, he didn't die yeah he's right and um, so and, the doc gives some medicine you know, to help kind of, I guess, maybe to clear it out of his system whatever, or something. Yeah. And in se- a couple of scenes in the movie, you see her with a little vial, putting yeah. some poison on his medicine spoon, yeah. and then putting the medicine on. And But Hans knows what's going on right now. He's not trusting this lady as far oh, as he, he can throw Oh, he spits it out. And when yeah. she turns and walks away, he spits it out in his right. thing and goes, right. still acts like he's... Because they've got a plan in motion. But he's acting you know? like, you know, you know, oh, he's, what would I do without you? And, right. But, uh, yeah, all the other, you know, they always show, like, Angelo looking through the window. Yeah. It's usually him. Yeah. Well, they, they, they've they caught on. They know that she's poisoning yeah. him. The plan's in motion. The plan's they're going to do it. the plan's in motion. Yeah, they're not going to let her get away with it. Venus confronts sure. um, Hercules about the poisoning. Yeah. And says, you know, even though no one has said it, everybody knows that you guys were in on it. And she's like, you know, I'm going to go to the cops. And he grabs her, but then all the... Everyone's watching. Circus performers are watching. And backs off. Yeah, but he backs off. But yeah, she threatens to um, call, the, you know, get the police involved, and that's going to mean that she's got to be out too eventually. Yep. So her life's going to be in danger. Um, so basically, what's going this all on? Culminates is, into. Yeah, um, we get to the evening uh, before the uh, the circus is about to leave. Go to the next town, next site, whatever. And uh, thunderstorms, she's about to give on some too. more medicine again. Yeah, and he, you know, he says, Let me see that little, you know, when she's got the spoon right there. And a couple of the other uh, small people are in the room too. Yeah, and she says she wants them gone. And he says, No, I want them to stay with me. And he says, Let me see that little bottle because, uh, yeah, you know, Angela had been able to see what she was doing, right? And you know, and the like, jig is up, she knows up. they know, whereas she didn't know they knew before. And the one guy sitting in a corner. 
springs out his blade. Yeah, he's got a switchblade. Little guy with a yeah. switchblade. And he just wipes it off. He's showing yeah. her, you know, I'm uh, ready. Johnny Eck, the half boy, he pulls, pulls out, out like a, like a pistol. pistol. Like a Ruger or whatever. Yeah, it looks like a German and pistol. He shines it a little. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the hell he got that. <laughs> but, um, and then the other side of the plan, for, like for Cleopatra Hercules, is that uh, they're going to take. Uh, Venus out. She knows too much, and they got to get right. rid of her. So he kind of slips out of the wagon. He's kind of like walking. The, the 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 troop is leaving. It's a thunderstorm. They're on they're the going road. cart to cart during all these scenes. Yeah, kind, kind of. It's a dirty road, mud Muddy mud road out in the forest. But Hercules kicks in the back of Venus's mm-hmm. you know trailer and stuff, and you know he's. I he's, think um, uh, Frozo. He's with Frida. And she kind of fills him in that, you know, she overheard that they're going to be after Venus. Yeah. So he has, so he kind of like gets to the rescue and he's fighting. He, he busts into the, you know, just the right moment, you know, the big hero yeah. moment. Yeah. He like he, grabs his legs as he's going through. Right. He, he busts into um, Venus's uh, wagon as, as that's going on. And there's a big fight. Oh, he he yeah. puts his head on the, on the stove and, mm-hmm. and he's getting whooped. But, you know, he's, you know, telling Venus, you know, go, go, get out. Oh, yeah. Um, so it saves her life. It's and, it's a brutal uh, scene that the thing crashes and turns over. Yeah, the wagon fires on over. his face, kind of burn. Yeah, yeah, yes, and, yeah. And this is the scene in in the rain. This is the classic scene. Yes, you know, I mean, um, uh, you love uh, the angles of the pictures, yeah, the, the under, film. It's, it's all like under the wagons as the rain's coming down. And um, Hercules is is choking out uh, Frozo. And uh, the one fellow with the switchblade. Yeah, remember? <laughs> Almost like the knife thrower. Perfect. Yeah, it's perfect right in the side yeah. of his chest. Yeah. And then comes like the scene. They're all coming at you with the knives. Yes. And they've all, even, even Slitzy so, got, a, got a little knife, you know, the mind of a three-year-old. and Very the, eerie and that, that scary That one freaks looking, me out. Yeah, crawling under there, black mm-hmm. and white, just... What a what a yeah. view and, and a they've all got a blade capture, yeah. And uh, the human torso. I love when he comes. You know, he's got it in his teeth. Yeah, he's like rolling. I don't know what he's gonna do, but yeah. that's always that's a great scene. Right. He's, or the one little like kind of wolf boy that they yeah. You finally get a look at him. He, he was in right, the but um, yeah, like even and like everyone's crawling, even though you don't have to. It's just like that crawling in the mud. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think like that, he told them to make you know as airy as possible, just crawl through the mud right. underneath the stuff. Right. And I just I, I always remember that scene, and they're they're all going towards Cleopatra. Right, Cleopatra takes off. Uh, she's running through the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Hans and a couple of the other small people are are coming, and uh, Johnny Eck, the half boy, yeah. running on his hands. That's a real eerie scene. Just oh, in the yeah. rain, coming after her in the dark, in the and rain, she just the screams. Mud. And then we go back to the end. How we started the movie with the with the, the, with the carnival talker Barker. Yeah, telling and, the story. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to see what happened. And this is and this is the story of Cleopatra. Remember, yeah. and and, it, and they do show her down there. It's Cleopatra. She's kind of all cut up and uh, cut up half of what she used to be, and they've turned her into the Duck Woman. Yeah, where she's just like Wah! she looks like Wah! she's got. Yeah, Wah! she's doing that. Whether they cut her tongue, mm-hmm. whether they. Just tarred the feather on her or what? But now some of the parts it, they cut out were that scene, um, you know the, the 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 rain scene. I know of two parts particularly that uh, that were cut mm-hmm. were when um, they were attacking um, Cleopatra. Um, you know she just kind of screams and it kind of fades out, and then mm-hmm. we go to the Barker again. Um, lightning hit a tree. The tree fell on her legs, which explains why her legs were gone. Okay. And then the the, the rest of them just kind of converge on her. And I think that would have been kind of cool to see. Oh like yeah, that. I, and, that would have been awesome. Uh, and then, uh, well, I'm speaking as a horror film, right? And I mean, then they actually you know. uh, castrated Hercules because when they get to the the carnival where you see the Duck Woman, yeah, next to her booth. Is Hercules, and he was supposed to like be singing in a high soprano voice. Um, okay. So you, they don't, you don't actually see them cutting him, right. but it's implied what they did to him. Mm. They, they took his manhood. Oh. So um, you know what they in effect did is because they were humiliated by by Cleopatra and Hercules. You know, especially Cleopatra. They you know, turn. they they made her into a a freak. So that, you know, experience it from our point of view. Yeah, now. now there you are. You can live our life for the rest of your life. Exactly. Yeah. And then the, the actual end of the movie is just one of those things they tacked on. They were trying all kinds of different endings. Yeah. Where uh, Hans is kind of living in a nice big, excuse me, nice big type. house. Yeah. Um, it's 
inferred that a couple of years have gone by yeah. and uh frozo venus and and frida show up at the house and the butler's telling him he's like i haven't seen anyone in years and i'm not going to see them send them away yeah but they kind of they barge right in, in anyways yeah and uh basically you know they do make mention because I, I guess a lot of people when the film came out were disturbed by the fact that you know all the stuff that happened to hans and then he becomes so bloodthirsty you know at the end and, and mm-hmm. partakes in the killing right um Frida actually says something in passing to kind of say, you know, it wasn't your fault. You just wanted the poison bottle. And, she, you know, because mm-hmm. um, it, it's just real quick. And I think that's to kind of soften, you know, that, yeah. that Hans wasn't really, you know, even though he was in that group that was chasing after mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, he wasn't, you know, bloodthirsty like the others were. Yeah. And then she basically forgives him, and you know, she's like, "Don't cry, Hans. Don't cry," because he's ashamed of how he right. treated all of them. Yeah, it ends with his head on her lap, mm-hmm. pretty much, saying, "You know," and fades to black. Right, the that's, end. that's and, the film. Yeah, and um, and very it was, it's up there, man. It's an awesome movie. Absolutely, set aside, different from anything you would have seen before right or to date or even since. now yeah, you know there's I mean, just there's a handful of films that kind of just stand on their own you know yep, this is one plenty of, of slash movies plenty of you know yeah you know all kinds of other horror movie, monster movies but there's nothing like this yeah i mean even for the time i mean you know black and white horror right. movies were you know monsters this and that this was right. just totally different and you know I mean, like you we know. did our our top 10 lists and you know um i think even though our lists were very different you know i think both of us kind of like either like, love, or respect each other's lists. Oh, yeah. You know, Without I mean, a doubt. There's, there wasn't really, like, any movies on your list that I didn't at least, you know, have a passing respect or actually love right. myself. Oh, yeah. Um, but Freaks just really, you know, just impacted me somehow. And even though, you know, you modern horror fans probably wouldn't put this movie on their top ten list, go check out the people that direct those horror movies. You, know, yeah. you look at the... You know, Joe Dante's and Rob Zombie's from today, and look, and I'll bet you dollars to donuts, Freaks is a movie that that uh, you know inspired them. Oh, yeah. And you know that's why I think it's important that we talk about these movies. You know, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, there's a million podcasts for you know newer horror movies out there, <laughs> but you know you got to talk about these old ones. Let's get back to the basics and where it all came from. And, oh yeah, you know it goes back doubt, even man. further than this to, to the silence, and you know those have some creepy moments. And go ahead, watch them in the dark. You know, because that's how they're Heck meant to yeah, be. Like man. when we did Island of Lost Souls. Not a silent movie, but just... Yeah, mm. oh, you, especially the big screen TVs we got now. Yeah. You watch this in the dark. Yeah, I it's mean, almost like watching it in a movie theater. Oh, almost, it's, and, it's great, man. Yeah. So... Yeah, revisit these black and white movies, yeah, man. Absolutely. I mean, they're... You we don't, don't do enough know, of them. You don't know what you... We'll get to them. I know. I we don't mean, do enough of them. Yeah, I, I Those think, are the ones I really love. So. That's that's the ones I love, too. But, I mean, uh, this is one that I've been wanting to do. We've been talking about doing this one since we started. Yeah. And, and I'm glad we finally did it. Yeah. Um, Lots of information. I hope uh, everybody loved it, man. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, if you don't have it... Yeah, and... Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you know, don't cheat. You know, go go get the DVD. It's like 10 bucks. Yeah. And, and, and watch this movie. It's only an hour long. You're not going to kill yourself. And when you're watching it, respect it. Don't, mm-hmm. you know... Don't. Oh my God! Just respect it, man. Yep. It's 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 what it is. It's one it's, of a kind. Yep. And we're lucky to even have it after all the cuts and controversy and the yep. hate and the, 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 this movie got when it first came out. We're lucky to even have it. Same like with the original um, Nosferatu. I mean, oh, yeah. we're lucky to even have that movie yeah. because by law it was supposed to have been destroyed. Yeah. Oh boy. So so yeah, we may, heck man, this has got me in the mood for black and white. So, but yeah. I don't know. I think we were thinking a night of the creeps. Yeah, we, we may that. do that next week, but we're going to start getting to some black and white movies. So it's getting to be that time, isn't it? Yeah, summer's almost over. Summer's almost gone. Yeah, fall's coming. You're going to get some time. little bit more darker stuff coming and all that. Right. So definitely cool. It's time to creep back. I love atmosphere, and that's oh, what these yeah. movies have. No. I don't need jumps and scares. I like atmosphere that's oh, unsettling yeah. and the whole, you know, that's what I like. And, and this one just has so many human oddities in it that you know, it's just, you're not going to see you know, yeah. like I said, even, even medical science has kind of eliminated a lot of this. You know, we, we don't get so many people, maybe in other countries, but mm-hmm. you don't see people like this very much and uh, yeah. um you know, this was like the one opportunity you had to kind of see some really weird things. Yeah. Even to nowadays. I mean, yep. unless you're watching a documentary on TLC or something. Right. And even then, you're not going to see the... I mean, this is about the story of the Sideshow mm-hmm. Circus. And it's it, it's almost documentary style. I mean, I mean, not the movie, but just seeing these real life, mm-hmm. you know, 
free. Just little slices of you know, life li- in there. Yeah, and how um, they live their life. I mean, it's, but you know, um, yeah, I think we can just look at it now with uh, more empathetic eyes mm-hmm. and um, realize. I, I think we just live in a culture now; it's a little bit more sensitive, and yeah. um, you know these. I don't know, you just empathize. Whereas people looked at them before and were just so horrified by their appearance. Oh, yeah. That was the whole point. And especially all the the info that you mm-hmm. got on their, even every one right. of their lives, kind so of. So many I of mean, them had sad lives, you know, I mean, and, uh, you know, none of these people asked to be born that way. No. And, no. Um, you know, even my five-year-old understood that just because people are different doesn't mean they're bad. Um, yep. You know, you can't help but look. When right. you see someone walking on a street that looks real different, or someone who's nine feet tall, or whatever, right. you can't help but look. And I'm sure they understand that. But um, you know, you just you know, she understood that you know they have feelings too. Right. You know, just because you know Schlitzie's got the mind of a three year old, you wouldn't go and be mean to him or her just because right. they're different. And you know, that's that was the point of the movie. And I don't think people got that back then. It was just the you know, it was the, a shock of seeing the shock that. of seeing I mean, people. Yeah, like this that. is the first. It was a new medium back then. Yeah, talking I mean, motion pictures. Exactly. And, That's what I was going to say. I mean, movies and right. actually seeing this. Because, I mean, where would you ever have seen it unless you actually went there and right. visited, you know, a circus sideshow, you know? Mm-hmm. This is just putting them all right up there on the screen, and you're like going, oh, my God, what the heck, you know? And right. So, I, I mean, in a way, I, I can see, you know, it's like the shock of the first time of right. seeing something like that. But, um, yeah, as time is gone, I mean, mm-hmm. like you said, you re- respect right. it. I mean, you know. And horror I mean, movies were a new thing back then, too. Yeah. So, and there were a lot of groups, you know, rallying against church groups and stuff, rallying oh, against sure. horror yeah. films. And there was the whole big controversy with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, like movies like Little Caesar and stuff yeah. like that. You know, the Scarface, the original Scarface. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah I, mean, mm. I mean, even though we watch it now, but it glorified that kind of gangster lifestyle. And, oh, I love those movies, too. Oh, no, absolutely. Cagney, we should know. just do some just for Edward the fun G. Of Robinson. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. Little Caesar. I watched Little Caesar with my daughter. She loved I love Little when, Caesar. I love when James Cagney <laughs> punched you guys in the face, man. Never, no one did it no. better. <laughs> you know, I'm just a quick old... <laughs> I love it. But, uh, oh. yeah, yeah, and they just, they looked for things to rally against, and, you know, they didn't like horror movies. You know, in the 50s, it was like the comic books. They didn't like the comic books. Right. Kids that read comic books were going to turn into delinquents. It'll always go and, on. And this Ooh. movie, when news about this movie began to circulate, that just... It gave everybody a lightning rod. To, Listen, from you know, Germany, it seems like a movie's fake. Todd Browning, the man has been counted. Yeah, you know, blacklisted from yeah, the like, movie theater. The, the old uh, newsreels <laughs> or whatever. You know. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's part of it too. So it just kind of got lost after that and, and rediscovered. And I hope you rediscover it too. Yeah, hey, I, I hope that somehow this lost footage comes up somewhere. But I think it it's gone, won't, but yeah. I would love, love to see it. And uh, <sighs> I'm, I'm sure if it ever gets found, we'll hear about it. So. Okay, man. I think this was one of our most informative podcasts. That's yeah, for sure. It actually went half an hour um, longer than the movie. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that's so pretty bad when the podcast is longer than the movie. Holy Moses! <laughs> no, no. Hey, I, th- I thought that was awesome. I, I learned a lot of information. There's so from many it, man, interesting but... people, even from the people yeah. who made it to the people who are in it. Awesome, There's so man. much interesting people, you know. And, and it, we could always talk about the movie and how weird the people looked. You know, I, I wanted to try to share what I knew about the people. Yeah, and I'm and glad I did. You did man. I didn't know a lot about some of them. I knew some about a few of them, but yeah. um, like I said, I was just you know with these books, I was just you know exposed to them. You know, these are old. These have been in my parents' house my whole life, pretty well, much. Well, I found Ted in a um, circus. I, I kind of yeah, yeah. pulled him out. I said, no, this is no place for him. He, you were eight. Yeah. He, yeah. he couldn't speak or nothing. They He's were throwing oatmeal child. into him. <laughs> and I pulled him out. I'm like, Saved my life. And ever since, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I'm holding anyway. him up now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Anyways, we're gonna end it. This yeah. is uh, we got about an hour and a half in this podcast. So, um, yeah. So, uh, pl- hey, it's the end of the podcast. I should always say this at the beginning, but I'm not saying anything. Leave us feedback, man. iTunes. Anyways, um, do your we job. Will- yeah. Come on, man. We're the number one horror podcast on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we, crack me up. We again. keep saying it. They'll believe it. Yeah. Well, we're getting there. We got the best content. So let it be written. So let it be done. Yeah. Okay, man. Later on. Till next week. Later.